Hello, I'm Z, and welcome back to StarCraft Brood War Remastered. We're gonna continue on what I believe might be the actual final episode, as I only have the Protoss left to kill in this mission, and I think that might be very doable. Especially with the Hydralisk strategy I've developed here. Let's get them um, over this way. Yep. Get all the Hydralisks over there. Any more Hydralisks that I have to get? I mean, there's these ones that are, like, still coming over. So I guess make them come over here as well. It's not there. Here we go. I think I already have everything set to, like, the correct... Rally point. I didn't mean to upgrade anything actually there. That was just, um, it just happened to have pressed that. Just so happened. Now, what might destroy this is. Reapers. That's not what they're called. The Reapers. I was really thinking there. I was really out here thinking, what were they called? Okay, we're gonna have that squad of just like aerial units. Okay, and we're gonna save right here. Because we know multitasking is a bitch. We're gonna attack right there. Okay, stop down here. Oh right, Dark Templar, that's what can be invisible. Let me get some detection. There we go. Attack. Oh, are you really gonna do me dirty like that? Attack! It seems they don't have reavers. Is the one thing I, I seem to have noticed. Seems very much that they do not have reavers. All forces are under attack. Get everyone over here. All forces are under attack. Okay, let me get this guy so we can actually detect those people. Okay, let's hold out right here. Let's bring a few more overlords. And how about you boys? Going for a bit of sniping. Mm -hmm. 
No, no, how about you don't go in for a bit of sniping? Our forces are under attack. Move right there. All right. We took down the first part of the base. Now let's save right here. Because there's more yet to come. Okay, go over there. Let me bring one of these boys here. Yep, here we go. Let me get some more going. Alright, alright. Save right here as well. 20. Oh, that's 120. Hold on, hold on. I don't want any mistakes like that. Let me save... Delete. Make a 20. There we go. Destroy. Collapse. Alright, alright. Get these ones to like go. Oh, they do have Reaper. Uh, Reavers. Take out that thing! Take out this, the cybernetic stuff, because we don't want that. But do we not have any more overlords? Get them overlords over here! Oh shit, they attacked through the other side. I guess that kind of works. It's a, it's a pincer maneuver, if anything. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep on destroying. Savor oh. this victory, Kerrigan. For the Protoss will never forget your treachery. We shall be watching you. That's it. Victory on the last mission. It feels great, I'll tell you that. It feels great. Anyways, now we're gonna watch the final cutscene of the game. Once again, I stand atop the broken bodies of my enemies. Victorious, but not unscarred. The Earthborn Directorate has been destroyed, and the Overmind lies dead and trampled beneath the ashes of Char. As for my unlikely allies, I think that I shall allow them a reprieve. For in time I will seek to test their resolve and their strengths. They will all be mine in the end, for I am the Queen of Blades. None shall ever dispute my rule again.
dearest Helena, by now the news of our defeat has reached the earth. The creatures we were sent here to tame are untamable, and the colonies we were sent to reclaim have proven to be stronger than we anticipated. Whatever you may hear about what has happened out here, know this. Alexei did not die gloriously in battle. I killed him. My pride killed him. And now my pride has consumed me as well. You will never see me again, Helena. Tell our children that I love them, and that their father died in defense of their future. Over. Epilogue Shortly after Dugal's defeat, the remainder of the UED fleet was overtaken by Kerrigan's forces and eradicated. No UED vessel ever made it back to Earth to report what had transpired. With this ragtag fleet beaten and crippled, Arcturus Menx fled back to Core Hall to lick his wounds and plan the reconstruction of his Terran dominion. Artanis and the Protoss survivors returned to Shakuras to begin rebuilding their once glorious civilization. Zeratul and James Raynor went their separate ways and have not been heard from since their departure. And alone, floating on a dark platform above the, above the burnt out planet of Char, Sarah Kerrigan, the Queen of Blades, sat and lorded over the ravenous swarms, unable to shake the feeling that a great threat loomed over the horizon. Kerrigan could stare off into the vastness of space, where she beheld a great void, or perhaps a reflection of a hollow victory, and of the trials yet to come. Oh, and with that, we have... We have finished StarCraft Brood War. You do not know how great this feels. This is my childhood game. Possibly one of the first games I have ever played. I know, possibly the first game I have ever played in my entire life. And I have never before finished it, properly finished it, like I did now. This music right now is nostalgic and somber and victorious at the same time. And it brings me so much joy to reminisce upon those days where I couldn't beat the levels. I just... I wasn't smart enough. I didn't know how to control the units, I didn't know how to play around, but I still had so much fun. And believe me, it was hell. Young me would not have had a fun time with this game if he knew how difficult it was. These last few missions were unbearable. The AI didn't cheat, but they had a great head start. This last cutscene here was... Was one I haven't seen before, and uh... I can just say that now, after getting to know the actual characters and learning about them, and well, caring about them, that scene with Dugal really, really was something. It, um, I just couldn't expect Dugal would do that. Actually, he is the kind of man that would do that. I can expect that, but I didn't expect it to actually be in the game, to be a, a thing that actually took place. That shocked me. And wow, it's this was an amazing game. Both this and the original StarCraft were both just incredible. But you can tell just how much more work they put into the actual story of Brood War. Brood War is the defining expansion of a game. It's like, it's so good. It adds so many more units that play nicely between each other. The Valkyries are great danger, but if fought by a, Val uh, by a, by a Hydralisk, will be useless. The Protoss Arbiter is just a, such a great unit. The ability to make everything invisible, except for the one unit that makes everything invisible. Recalling units and... Oh god, there's so many things I could talk about. Devourers, too, are a great addition. I didn't know about them. I didn't even remember them from when I was young. But uh, they played in nicely towards the final missions. 
And what I can say now is, uh, I do highly suggest you play this. I know the entirety of StarCraft 2, and nothing will surprise me when I play it, but, but this I didn't know. And um, it's so much better than StarCraft 2 is. It's so, so much better. It's understandable why this was the RDS, R RTS of the time. It's just... Everyone at least heard of StarCraft. It was the eSports, it was everything. That when it came to talk about, you know, RD RTS. If someone said RTS and they started talking about it, there would be like three major ones. Age of Empires, Command and Conquer, and StarCraft. And StarCraft was a single game, not a franchise of games like the others. And it stood its ground for a long time until it finally got a second release of StarCraft 2. And I'm not surprised about that, you know, it's very obvious just how much work went into this and the story and the characters the writing is incredible and this isn't quite the end this is the end of the series there will be one more video that will be going up that video is the secret mission that i might have talked about talked about i know how to unlock it and i will be getting it and that is a uh, way more relaxed and just story-based mission from what i heard but i also don't know how that's gonna play out i have no clue what it's about but i'm glad i finished this game you know there were points where i just didn't want to play the game anymore it was so hard it was so heartbreaking just seeing me fail and fail at this childhood classic and now that i've beaten it i'm both sad and happy that there's not more of the story that's so great and well written and you know i'm also happy that there's there's no more it's finally over i've beaten what i considered the greatest challenge of my childhood just beating starcraft i could beat age of empires that was simple you build catapults and you win but beating this oh my god it's such a challenge And I don't even know how my dad managed to beat this. I'll be honest with you. I'm a pretty good RTS player at this point. Like, no, I'm not good, but I'm a pretty good one. Like, if you were to compare me to someone who has played one or two RTSs, I'd probably do better. I'd figure stuff out faster. But my dad, my dad was an RTS player. He loved Age of Empires 1, 2, StarCraft. And it's interesting because i never considered that he would beat the campaigns right but he I've, I've talked to him and he did i'm amazed because he doesn't seem like the person the kind of person to be capable of actually beating a game this difficult but i guess that's just how games were back then and i i i guess that's that was expected of games which nowadays you know having a very difficult game is praised because wow we haven't seen that in ages why because because kids are dumber nowadays, including me. I can admit when I say that I'm probably dumber than most of the uh, older people were at my age. But either way, going back to StarCraft, I uh, I really like how this ties in to StarCraft 2. I'm not going to talk about it because if you don't know the story of StarCraft 2, I will be starting it not soon, but at some point in the future because I want to take a break from StarCraft let this just sit in my mind and appreciate it you know this game was amazing um now what i wanted to mention was it ties in very very nicely with what starcraft 2 wanted to do and did i believe the final ending of starcraft 2 was not very satisfying but either way this game's final ending here is perfect because it's a cliffhanger leaving it available to like continue the story and it's just like it's defeat that's what it is it's always such an interesting way of uh it's such a, it's always so interesting to see a game write their story this way right because in a game and mostly like just a lot of the in a lot of things when you talk about a game if you're gonna be talking about a game that in the end you prevail you are victorious right but in this game you play as every perspective you are on the side of everyone and you want everyone to win or maybe not depending on how much you like the queen of blades Kara, uh Kara, sarah 
I thought I tried a 60 carry gun and Sarah on one. Um, she, um, she's an interesting character. I definitely like her, but she is evil. She is the evil of the series. That that's that's made very clear. The Zerg is the evil, and the Protoss is a neutral faction, and. The Terrans are supposed to be the good guys, but it's really a battle between the Protoss and the Terrans being actually good. You can tell there's a, a struggle because both of the races have strong moral codes. Especially the Protoss. The Protoss go by their morals until they die and even after. While as the Zerg don't. And having Kerrigan defeat everyone and, and making the game end in defeat, in evil prevailing, is such a great story storytelling like tool because you don't expect it you actually just do not expect it in most games you expect the good guys to win but here it's it's not like that it's not as simple as that who's the good guys what are their goals who are these people you find out who they are and you pick your favorites but in the end True evil wins here. There is no denying the Kerrigan is evil. And... I don't know, it's just... It's tragic in a way, and it's very, very interesting. I'm glad this game got a remaster, because goddamn, I, I, I needed it. I actually needed this remaster so damn badly. To make me able to play the game again, to get me into it and, and and to actually tell me the story of StarCraft and <sighs> convince me to make a series to the point where I finished StarCraft and god damn it, it's still one of the achievements that I've I've had on my bucket list for the longest time. <sighs> it's been about like five years since since I added beating StarCraft to my bucket list because I always wanted to beat StarCraft, yet I never could. It's a difficult game. And now that I finally forced myself to do it. I'm glad. It's an achievement that I can definitely write off. Oh, and this music, man. It gives me goosebumps. The music in... Um, in Dugal's final cutscene was... beautiful. It was beautiful. That music of, like, the final message. The final goodbye. The last hope of a man that's been swallowed by his pride. Great. It's so great. Man. And I wish there was more StarCraft, but... Sadly, Blizzard and... Everything has made it kind of go to shit, and we know there won't be any more StarCraft, basically. Which is sad. But... There is hope. For me, at least. Because the developers of StarCraft... I have been working on their own gate called uh, their own gate no game called Stormgate. There we go. And I am signed up to the beta. I am definitely going to be playing it and I'm going to be seeing what it's like. I'm very curious because having this as one of my, you know, childhood games and StarCraft 2 as one of my childhood games. It's just seeing seeing another game from them can either be the greatest thing or the worst thing depending on how well they make it. I'd say the setting is a bit less original, but it really depends on how they go with the story. If they make a simple story, like what StarCraft 2 had, then I'll be quite disappointed. But if they actually take time and write a story this great, like StarCraft 1 was, then yeah, it's, it's gonna be a, a big thing in development there. They've talked about it, and they, uh, they have two races playable. They're thinking about adding a third one, as they've always liked it. Hinting to the fact that StarCraft has always had three races. Um, but they're not sure yet. They definitely have to expand the story and the lore and the world setting and everything. But the game looks good, I'll say that. The game looks like a StarCraft game. And I'm glad. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be quite curious to see what Stormgate has to offer. I might even be live-streaming live it. As much as I don't like live-streaming, I might even be live-streaming it when it comes out the beta. But back to actual StarCraft Brood War. Yes, a lot more effort went into StarCraft Brood War. It's very obvious by the storytelling. StarCraft 1, of course, was 
was uh, the, the original campaigns were great and they had great story but this just took it like so many steps above what you expect betrayal tragedy and uh and drama honestly a lot of drama as much as i don't like that word it is what happened mischief as you could say wow that's a lot of people to have special thanks to now as i said this isn't quite the end I'm gonna be playing that secret mission that's gonna be coming up in two days from when this goes up um i'm actually gonna tell you something here because i think it's important to note um i played this entire mission in one day this final mission i was convinced i wanted to beat it so this morning i started the mission in the afternoon i played more of the mission and now towards uh towards the night towards midnight actually because it's quite late i uh finally finished it and i'm glad i'm so glad but at the same time you know <laughs> i'll have a few, a few videos on advance so i don't know th when this will actually go up to tell you when the secret video will come up secret video extra video i guess i'll call it I, I do like calling extra videos extra you know bonus whatever it's called it's just yeah i'm gonna let all the credits play because i feel i i feel like this is a way of respecting the developers that worked on this because they do deserve it they made such an incredible experience for my entire childhood and for this playthrough oh man okay. i feel as i could cry right now of joy of just pure joy of having finished this. Because I'm so glad to finish the childhood game of mine. It's... It's probably one of my favorite games of all time, as well. As much as I say it's the first game that I've played, it's, it's also probably one of my favorites. If not my favorite game of all time. Yeah, it's... <laughs> it's amazing. And it really shows how many people worked on it. I know StarCraft 2 also had this many people work, work on the game. And it shows because that game is also great. I'd say storytelling wise, it's not quite as good. It has some ma some minor flaws that it, it, it eventually build up to be one major flaw of the story that I quite dislike and I think many people dislike. But yeah, knowing that Stormgate is coming in the future and knowing that it's the same developers gives me a bit of hope because you know um there have been examples where developers that worked on old games said oh we're we're teaming up together to make a new game right and that new game sucked because they haven't developed games in so long that so much has changed they don't know how to optimize things they don't know how to develop things they don't know how to adapt to today's market and um starcraft developers i'm glad that there's a there's a lower chance of that happening. StarCraft developers mean StarCraft 2 developers too. Which means that those people know how to make a modern game. They've been working on it. So that's that's great. I'm so glad that they don't they won't have as big of a hurdle to to cross there. Now I've heard the game will be free, so I'm quite curious to see how that'll play out in, in terms of how they actually make money. If it's skins or if it's pay to win in competitive play even though that would suck a lot. I don't know. I know they have a uh, Reddit ask me anything. Um, but I don't think I've looked at it too much. I should probably look there for answers now that I finished this. <sighs> yeah. Excitement I could not contain today just to finish the game. I was a bit pissed off learning that there's two more missions here when I, was ex I wasn't expecting them. I was like, oh, the eighth mission, we're finally at the finale. The ninth mission, oh, we're finally at the finale. No, the tenth one. The tenth one is the finale. And we're no longer at it, we're past it. We've beaten it. And that just makes me so happy. So, so happy. I'm not sure I have much to say anymore. I've kind of spoken about my entire thoughts for this game. But I can't say that I enjoyed it. I can't say that. It was truly a, a joy to play through. Although, yeah, sure, some places and some missions were were hard to get through, and I didn't find them that fun. They were challenging still, and they brought a they brought a nice 
balance between the easier missions. And oh Jesus, gee, look at how many people worked on this. I'm still surprised that this list is going on. I know it's listing StarCraft 1 developers, StarCraft 2 developers, special thanks to both ones, StarCraft Remastered developers, special thanks to those uh, side companies that helped with the project. All of that is being listed here. I know that's a lot. So... I... Uh, yeah, I don't have words anymore. It's just... There's nothing left for me to say. Except that I very much enjoyed it. I don't know nobody watched this series on my channel, as of, you know, me actually recording it now. It's my most unpopular series, and I'm completely fine with that, because this series as a whole was meant for me. It was never a suggestion from someone else, it was me wanting to play the game. And, uh, yeah, it was worth it. Some of my uh, my friends uh, disagreed on the idea of me flying StarCraft because it would be another RTS and that would be boring and some people didn't really like the idea of me playing another RTS is essentially what I'm saying, but I'm glad I did, honestly. Because now I get to be happy about it, you know, this has brought me so much joy. In a time where my not right now my life is a bit... a bit burdened by loss and uh, having such a great joy right now from this game it really lifts my spirit quite a bit my spirits quite a bit I know there's one person that might watch this finale and know what I'm talking about when I, when I say with loss but um, <laughs> there's definitely more time until said person might actually reach the finale if they even do Right. I will now talk about each campaign individually, I think, as a short summary, because that's the last thing I can think of. If we take the first campaign, episode one, with Jim Rayner and Arcturus Mengsk and Sarah Kerrigan. There were three very key characters and very well developed each one. Mengsk, oh, and uh, General Duke, right. They were all defined. They were all very unique and they behaved differently. Jim was always the rebellious guy. He, like, wanted to oppose the main, um, main, you know, what would I call it? Not the government, but, like, the main holder of the area, of the planets, like the UED or the Dominion that we came from Minsk. Minsk was always, where can I profit the most from? He had the most power out of and he wasn't he was willing to sacrifice anything for it if that meant making allies of enemies and making allies of even aliens i think right they he agreed to some help from protoss at some point sarah kerrigan being a psyops was able to read jim's mind and tell she could tell that you know jim loved her but um it's too bad that you know Meng's decision got them to where stuff ended up now with the Queen of Blades. This Manx abandoned Sarah Kerrigan and left her to die, although the Zerg had different plans for her because she was a Psyops. And then the General Duke was a character very much plot-oriented because he was not needed there, yet he was because he was there to provide reinforcements when we needed them and a worthy challenger when that was missing. As for the second campaign, the Zerg one with the Overmind and the Kerrigan's birth, I guess, rebirth as a Zerg, it was very interesting because you never knew what the egg contained. Of course, I knew because I played through it and uh, and I knew StarCraft 2. If you know StarCraft 2, you know what happens. Um, but I definitely knew what the egg contained. And if, if you don't know what the egg contains, it's a very big shock when you finally learn it. It's like, wow, that's Kerrigan. But yeah, it's it's a great story. There's not much more to it other than just it's Kerrigan and it's her rebirth. Then as for the third campaign, the Protoss one from the original, uh, it was very much about recapturing Ayer and protecting their pride and people. 
and Homeworld. They care about that a lot. Uh, inner conflict between them was very much a prominent theme because some people like Tassadar thought they should seek outside help and, you know, go away from the planet so that they can defeat the Zerg later with, with the help of Dark Templar, the Dark Protoss. Um, and he was very much right, but, you know, Aldarius didn't want to admit that. Aldarius was stubborn. He was the part of the conclave, the worthy conclave of the Protoss. He had his morals up, up to his fucking... It doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, he was a stubborn guy. And when he finally realized his mistake, he, he knew he was wrong. He sided with us. With Tassadar. And Tassadar gave a... Give an incredible sacrifice at the end. His life for the death of the Overmind. And it was incredible. That cutscene gave me goosebumps as well. It was such a great cutscene. Then, with his death, came the next Protoss campaign from Brood War. Which was a weird twist because you'd play Protoss Protoss, you know? It was a bit weird, but yeah. New units and everything. And the arrival of Artanis, who is an important character for later in StarCraft 2. If you want to know that. I'm, I, that's not a spoiler, it's just, you know, our tenants will be important. Although the loss of Phoenix was grave in the first campaign, we regained him by, you know, him, him becoming a Dragoon. And that was, that was a big shock too, like, he died, but he came back because that's how Protoss do things. Once you're dead, you're not fully dead. You're gonna serve a bit more for your planet. And they, they're proud of it. Then, well... We went to Shakuras with Zeratul, a very, very interesting character. I love Zeratul. And uh, with Artanis, Zeratul, and uh, Aldaris had a bit of a feud later. But that, I think, was because the, he was being mind-controlled by Kerrigan, Aldaris. Uh, it's very prominent. Uh, it's a very prominent feature of what um, the Queen has done later, you know? It's just mind-control, mind-control. The Queen of Shakuras, Rajagal, I think her name was. She was also mind controlled, I think early on. Maybe the first dialogue we had with her, she wasn't, but later, after that, it's, it was clear. Then we have one of my favorite campaigns, honestly. Dugal's campaign. The, Terran, the second Terran campaign with Dugal and Alexander Stukov. Or was it Alexei? No, it was Alexei Stukov. And uh, Dugal. Two very, very just well-written characters to get all together. From Earth, a place we know, over there to conquer, because that's what humans do best. And especially from Earth, it would be logical that the humans from Earth would want to conquer. Conquer, conquer. They go to the sectors that they don't have, and they take over them. And, uh, you know, the betrayal of Duran there, and, and uh, the conflict between Alexei and... Uh, and Dugal was very, very tragic. And um, it ended in misery, practic practically. It ended in misery, yeah, basically. Is what it ended in. And then came the final campaign. The Queen of Blade campaign. No longer is the Overmine a burden. It's just... The Queen of Blades. The Overmind was a slight burden because, you know, it was regrowing and we didn't want that, but it really wasn't that big of a deal. The main plot point of Queen of Blades' campaign was the conflict between her and former friends and foes. She made them all agree to be allies and then betrayed them, which is very Queen of Blades-ish. And the thing about the story that I've been talking about is she won. It's tragic. Dugal lost, Minx lost, and Artanis lost. It's Zeratul together. They all lost, and in their own ways, they went back. Minx went to rebuild his dominion. Zeratul and Artanis went back to homeworld to rebuild what was once a great place. Shakuras, not, not the actual homeworld of Ayr. And, well, Dugal, we saw what happened to him. The Gaul took his own life, because his pride was too great. And I understand that because he was very much written like a Soviet character. 
they made the Terrans out to be a Soviet kind of um, dominion, you know? Or actually, it was called the Directorate, like the United Earth Directorate, which was, you know, it, it seemed very Soviet of them. The way they made things, it's it, it seemed very much like that's that was the the vibe they were giving off, and it was interesting. And de Gaulle clearly took his own life because that's what a true Soviet would do in that situation, and that's what he was representing. He was representing a Soviet so Soviet general, I guess he was. Yeah, because it was, or was he Admiral de Gaulle? I think it was Admiral. Yeah, general. Uh, an, Soviet Admiral, I think, was what it was the theme, original theme for him, and he very much portrays that. Alexei Stukov was the general, I think. Maybe he was the admiral. I don't quite remember the order of the th of the things, but yeah, I w his death was tragic, and Dugal knows it. And uh, the message he sent to his wife very much, you know, conveys that. I've been talking for a while now. This is a forty-minute video. This is double of what I would usually have in a video, but I think we're reaching the end of the credits. These are what, like 20 minute credits almost? And it makes sense with how many people worked on the games. Oh god, I'm glad to finally finish this. I'm so, so glad. Yeah. Now, if you're asking what's gonna come next after the StarCraft campaign and everything, the last secret video, extra one, um, I'm going to be playing a game like Katana Zero, Hotline Miami. I know I can t say it here because no one really is watching this currently. Um, but yeah, Hotline Miami will be next after this game. And I'm very, I'm very much looking forward to that. I'll be playing Hotline Miami 1 and 2 because I know they're both relatively short games. And uh, I'm, I'm expecting to enjoy that too. I don't even know what we're mentioning here in the credits. Libmax Min DB, DDB. M M DNS responder. I mean, these are like, this is already just like licensing stuff. So we've we've gone past the credits. We're at licenses, so we'd, we must be near the end. Yeah. Look at that. This is uh, neither the name of Google Link nor the names of its contributors may be used to endorse or promote products derived from this software without specific prior written permission. Yeah, this is contractual stuff that they have to include obligations. Very interesting. But yeah, they uh, they knew what, were, what they were doing when they wrote this campaign. Not just this campaign, the entire series of campaigns. And the fact that they tied them together, but also having them separate. You can play any campaign and essentially you still kind of understand because of the like prior two campaign messages, right? If you play the second Protoss campaign, that's probably the most like conflicting one because you don't know what's happening. If you play that, there will be the messages at the start, right? Like the Protoss lost the Zerg and all that, blah, blah, blah. And then you start and you have a backstory. You can start from anywhere and you'll still kind of understand. You can play episode five, six, four, three, one, and two, and you'll understand the story as a whole because it's so well built. The episodes are indeed their own standalone campaigns. That's great about them. Jesus, these these credits are long. But it's it's, it's good because I get to talk. And you might be saying this is a boring final part, but it's it's my final part here of the video where I just I want to mention the the stuff that I think is worth mentioning about this game. Now, how do I put this? I'm quite sick of RTS at this point, in a way. Um, because I've been playing Command and Conquer and StarCraft at the same time. And you can imagine that gets a bit, um, not I put it, not repetitive, but that, that gets to a point where you don't really feel like playing RTS anymore. And I'll be, um, I'll be continuing to play Command and Conquer 2, uh, Tiberium Sun and Red Alert 2 and all that. And, uh, you know, they'll probably be fun, but I, I I will be taking a break from those as well. A shorter one, though. But StarCraft, I'll, I'll take a longer break because um, I, I think if I leave a bit more time in my mind to forget about StarCraft and come back to StarCraft 2, I'll forget some of that story, too. And that's that's something I really want to do because the StarCraft 2 story, the first time you see it, is also very, very great. Voice over and localization, Brazilian Portuguese localization. This is, 
I feel like this shouldn't be included if you're playing the English version, right? If you're playing the English version, why should you care about the Portuguese translation or whatever this translation was? I understand they worked on it, but they, it should only show if you actually played the version they worked on. Team Synthesis Italia. I don't even know what these are. QA testers, okay. Sound department, yeah. I kind of just want this to be over, but I guess I'll talk a bit more. I've already done a recap of everything and all I think was worth mentioning. Oh, now we're reaching the, name, the voice of everyone, I see. Yeah. Great voices these, uh, these people had. Great voices. I was not expecting this video to be this long, honestly. I was not expecting the credits to take, out, to take up this much time. But I guess they do. <laughs> I know, um... I know some credits take this long, yeah. But I, I do actually want to show them, because... It's... Really the only way I have of respecting the people that made this game. There's really no other way of saying thank you to them, other than just watching through them, and... You know, showing them on my channel. Let me actually look up how, the credit, how long the credits are, because they might just be incredibly long. They might be, like, ridiculously long that I couldn't even finish them. Okay, they are incredibly long. They're 45 minutes. I'll just skip through them like this now, because I can do that. Watch me speed through them. So this will be my final, like, you know, message about the game. 50 minute video, I feel like... Some people might disagree with the fact that I talk for so long here at the end, but I, on the other hand, I'm really happy that I, I got to talk at the end about this. Oh, there's the end. Special thanks. Thanks to our family and friends. What a great, great game. But, as this says, special thanks to you for watching. So... If you enjoyed the series as a whole, subscribe maybe. Other than that, have an awesome rest of the day, and I'll see you next time.